Hey friends, happy Tuesday. Today we are wrapping up, well not today, this week we are wrapping up our time studying the Apostles' Creed and today we are getting started looking at the kind of final chunk of that where we are talking about these phrases. I believe in the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. And our scripture for today, I'm going to read it and then we're going to back up and I'm going to we're going to kind of unpack this together. So this was the this is the scripture that we have chosen for today. John 5 verses 28 and 29. Jesus says, don't be surprised by this because the time is coming when all who are in their graves will hear his voice. Those who did good things will come out into the resurrection of life and those who did wicked things into the resurrection of judgment. Now, when we first look at those words, it's very obviously judgment heavy. It's very, um, let's look at what deeds you did, what deeds you did, and let's decide your fate. And as someone who grew up in a context and an environment that was very uh, scary when it came to judgment day and things like that, I can feel a lot of fear when I first read passages like that. But let's take a look because as I did some research, I found that there's a lot more to these words than meets the eye if we just cherry pick them like that. And when they're placed in their whole context, it becomes a bit more bright and beautiful. So if we chose to back up into John chapter five, that was at towards the middle of John chapter five. So we're in our Bibles and we just flip that page back over the beginning of John chapter five, we see that this is the beginning of John five is where Jesus heals the man at the pool. So there's this man, he can't walk. A bunch of people are going into this pool. They're coming out healed. They're restored. They're brand new. This man is just down on his luck. He says to Jesus, every time I try to go in that pool and get healed, somebody cuts me in line and I just can't get healed. So Jesus heals this guy, right? Cause Jesus is who he is. Backstory. This was on the Sabbath. At the time, the Jewish leaders were trying to do what was right. They were trying to observe the Sabbath. They were doing what they thought was fulfilling the will of God by saying, no, you're not allowed to work on this day. And so they're upset with Jesus for healing on the Sabbath, which enters into an entire conversation about Jesus's authority. So Jesus, before this, he's going through and talking about his relationship to the Father and how if the Father is working, then Jesus is working. And the, the Pharisees are getting even more frustrated because not only did Jesus work on the Sabbath, but now he's calling God his own father. And that, according to verse 18, makes Jesus equal with God, was their whole mentality. They were very offended by this, but Jesus kept going. Jesus was unpacking this for them. And that's where we get to verse 21, where Jesus says, as the father raises the dead and gives life, so too does the son give life to whomever he wishes. Verse 22, the father doesn't judge anyone, but he has given all judgment to the son so that everyone will honor the son just as they honor the father. Whoever doesn't honor the son doesn't honor the father who sent him. Now, if we do some research into this, we see that it was commonplace for Jews in this time to have a theology, we can say, of resurrection. They believed, it was commonplace for Jews to believe in eventual resurrection. They believed that that would happen from God, from Yahweh. What we see here is this question, it's over Jesus's authority, stemming from the fact that Jesus healed on the Sabbath, so he broke the law. Jesus is saying that God is his father, making himself equal with God. And now Jesus is saying, yeah, and also I'm, I am in charge of that eventual eternal promise. To me, when I read this, I see this as, yes, this is talking about one day when we all meet Jesus. But at the time, this was about Jesus proving himself to these people. He was trying to get through to them to say, I am God. God is in me. The Father and I are one. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Jesus is trying to show them this fully God, fully man divinity in him. He's trying to show them who he is and that he is the image of the invisible God. All of the things that we believe about Jesus. He's trying to show them his authority and who he is. That he's more than just a man. That he is God in flesh. He's trying to get them to see that all of these things that God has given you, that's, that's me. Two, the law, the healing, the father and son, the eventual judgment at the end. 
this is all Jesus too. So let's continue reading before a little bit before our passage that we had this morning. Verse 24, I assure you that whoever hears my word and believes in the one who sent me, Jesus is saying this, whoever hears the word of Jesus and believes in the one who sent me, so the Father, hear Christ's words, believe in the Father. Whoever hears my word and believes in the one who sent me has eternal life and won't come under judgment, but has passed from death to life. Is that comforting? Is that so much more encouraging to hear that that came before the verses that we just read? Doesn't that give you a sigh of relief as believers in Christ? I assure you that the time is coming and is here when the dead will hear the voice of God's son and those who hear it will live. A lot of folks uh, think that Jesus is talking about a spiritual death there. So people that uh, were dead in spirit, they hear the voice of Christ and they come alive in their spirit, which a lot of us can relate to. Verse 26, just as the father has life in himself, so he has granted the son to have life in himself. He gives the son, the son authority to judge because he is the human one. And then we get to our verses for today. Now hear this again with all of that context. Don't be surprised by this because the time is coming when all who are in their graves will hear his voice. Those who did good things will come into the resurrection of life and those who did wicked things into the resurrection of judgment. He ends with saying, I can't do anything by myself. Whatever I hear, I judge and my judgment is just. I don't seek my own will, but the will of the one who sent me. So friends, today let's remember that we have passed from death to life, that we have that eternal life because Jesus has granted that to us. And that when we're confused or wondering, you know, what is that eventual end times going to look like or that judgment? Let's have that encouragement of exactly what Jesus was trying to show the Sadducees and the Jews at that time. Jesus is in charge of that. Our savior, the one who loves us, the image of the invisible God, fully God, fully man, our advocate, the one who is ever pleading for us, the one who died for us, the one who took away our sins, he's the one that we're gonna meet that day. So we can live our lives knowing that that promise is ahead of us. I hope that was as fun for you as it was for me. Um, I hope that you're encouraged to pick up your Bibles and to look beyond just like the single cherry picked verses and look into some context and some depth and find the brighter and more beautiful message that is hidden in plain sight. In scriptures like this. Have an awesome day and I'll see you Sunday.